So um, basically today is part of our postgraduate events at Ulster University. So we're looking at the difference that postgraduate study can make um, to people who are already um, obviously uh, employed in education or an educational organization and we're going to look at what we can offer. Okay, so we have two courses available at the School of Education, uh, the Master of Education with Specialisms and the Postgraduate Diploma in School Leadership, formerly called the Postgraduate Diploma in Headship. Um, and there's a little mugshot there. My name's Claire Woods and I'm the course director for both. So um, I can deal with lots of queries that come. Okay, so there are lots of benefits of studying at Ulster University uh, and these are things which um, may perhaps uh, swing you if you were considering whether or not to study and uh, what might be good about Ulster in particular. Um, again, we have a very supportive study environment. Uh, people are encouraged and supported. People find the courses rich and really make them reflect on what they are looking for in their career or in future study too. Um, and I'll let you have a little think about it. I think point two there is perhaps one of the most interesting, a competitive edge in employment. Having a master's or having the PG dip in school leadership is something which can set you apart. It's on your CV, it's something that you can speak about with confidence and it shows commitment to uh, Sam. Can I say something yeah? about that? Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. uh, no coincidence there are a few people on here have benefited greatly from the course and have had promotions, significant promotions. But just uh, as I was getting a cup of coffee before coming on here, an email came through from the Department of Education because one of our students mm. has just been formally appointed head of Kelly Kameen Junior High School, Jane, Jane Murphy, and just within the last, as I say, uh, 30 minutes. So I thought that was significant. <laughs> Excellent. And so uh, we'll talk more about it as we go through, but definitely we can see the difference it can make to people's career paths really and um, again I'll, I'll let our students tell you more about that themselves but certainly uh, we are hearing again and again of the difference it can make to people when applying for promoted positions or uh, even changing school or moving sideways again um, interviews and shortlisting look very favorably on our courses. Um, at Ulster, we offer very flexible modes of study. Uh, whilst we all really enjoy the face-to-face -face opportunity, we have to acknowledge that it doesn't work for everybody. And certainly with COVID, we have to uh, resign ourselves to being online. Um, but having said that, it works very well. Um, for many of our um, busy teachers, um, the flexible works well. The fact that you can study in the evenings or weekends, if you wish, uh, and yet still have um, regular study slots through the week, encouraging you to join in a webinar, encouraging you to join a discussion forum. So I think, again, the part-time, the distance learning, very appealing um, to many of our students, really. And actually fits quite well around things like sports commitments, family life, and so on. Um, so something to bear in mind if, if you're already busy, and I imagine you already are. Okay, um, so going on, um, I'm just going to talk very briefly about um, the structure of both courses and then we're over to our students who will tell you how it really is. Okay, um, so the Master of Education with Specialisms, uh, this is part time, uh, 180 credits for uh, specialisms, education management, inclusive and special education, uh, information communication technology and international comparative education you have the chance to uh, conduct a piece of research for this, either the research project or the dissertation. Uh, and often you will be looking at um, uh, reflecting on uh, practice in your own organization and applying theory to practice. So we'll talk more about that in due course. Um, we also have the postgraduate diploma in school leadership, a very popular course. Uh, for those who are uh, perhaps in a promoted position in a leadership role or aspiring to be so. Um, and it's really helpful in that we look at whole school issues and whole school uh, management and leadership really. And again, we've got four key modules and this will make up 120 credits, 30 credits per module, building teams and managing resources, leadership for learning, strategic development planning and managing the organization. 
um, and generally it's a two-year course um, where students take uh, two modules per academic year um, and we can uh, ask people to join in September or January you can join um, at either point in the year okay so um, I'm just going to rattle through these very quickly but basically a few things that we can offer that others may or may not be able to uh, I think one thing that sets us apart, our tutors are very um, experienced and um, lead uh, practitioners, really, um, and all founded in research, really, and um, ongoing professional development, really. Um, our courses are designed to suit uh, a Northern Irish audience, but are also very um, transferable in terms of nationally and internationally. Uh, and we suit a range of educational settings. Um, students generally like the, the uh, modules that are offered and they like the flexibility. They also like the chance to um, perhaps bring in uh, prior learning if they can um, through APEL onto the MED in particular. Um, and as we said before, um, our courses can lead to promotions, uh, certainly taking up of leadership roles, if not immediately in the future, and even further academic research publication and some even come back to us to do their PhD with us. So um, I'm going to try and twist a few arms of our students <laughs> in due course. Uh, OK, so um, meet the panel. This is what we've been waiting for. I'm sure you don't want to just hear from me. So we have Dr. Sam McGuinness, my dear friend and colleague, who is a lead tutor, I suppose, might be the best way to describe him on Postgraduate how, how, did, how, did, how did you get a picture of my primary school there? <laughs> These are my favourite things in the world. These are the Robert Duano, the uh, French photographer, and I love all of his school images. They just charm me. Um, so we have a number of students from um, school leadership course. Some are from uh, the masters, and some have actually made the transition from school leadership onto the master's course. So we have um, a mix of students for you and they're all in either their final year, just finished, or um, in second year. So um, we have um, a range of um, viewpoints for you. So I'm going to ask our panel to um, join me now. And I'm just changing the view. Hopefully uh, you should see a little gallery of speakers. Uh, it's lovely. It's like that little fashion quiz show. What was it? Celebrity Squares. <laughs> I'm showing my age, but uh, you can imagine for yourself. I don't like to say the Muppets. That might be offensive. But um, yes, a little panel of expertise. There we go. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'll maybe ask, um, let me see. I'll maybe ask um, for volunteers, really. What brought you to Ulster? Open the floor. Whoever wants to just go first. Why Ulster? I mean, I know there are always things that come to you by email and Facebook and so on, promoting every university in the country and beyond. What made you pick Ulster in particular? Anybody want to? Um, Natalie, thank you. Uh, Natalie. Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, lovely. Thank um, you, Natalie. Yeah, so to be honest, I looked at so many different courses. I really did. I'm English, so I was really worried about Ulster because I wasn't sure how it would apply to me and my circumstances. Um, but my partner had done the Masters um, with Ulster, and, and he's Irish, so <laughs> he was like, it's amazing. But when I researched, uh, I looked at Leeds Beckett, I looked at about seven or eight in, in England, and they didn't offer the things that I wanted. Uh, the cost was way higher than Ulster actually for each module, um, which was a definite selling point. I found that Ulster was one of the cheaper ones. Um, and the other thing is that the courses that were offered and the specialisms that were offered were really appealing to me. Most of the other universities were just offering masters in education, um, and that nowadays doesn't really set you apart necessarily as much as a specialism would so having the opportunity to explore different specialisms and have that on your degree was something that really appealed to me as well and i'd heard lots of really good things about the courses um and so that was part of what in interested me and made me want to join um when i was 
asking around to the different universities as well. The help and the guidance that I got even before I joined the course was really amazing from Ulster. People got back to me straight away and any concerns that I had about the payments or the different modules or the time, people replied to me immediately. And I think that you, Claire, were one of the first people that responded to me even before I'd even started the course. They forwarded my email and you replied straight away. So. I really felt, you know, that there was a really good level of communication in the university. So I was really happy about that too. I could go fantastic on. That. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important, especially, you know, for us to know that we can attract people who are not just, you know, right next door to the campus, really. It's really important for us to know that we have uh, a degree of um, regard elsewhere and beyond you know our little doorstep in our little corner of the world and that our qualifications are valued and can travel uh, and i'm glad to hear that communication has been good um i think you know in some circumstances universities can be a bit distant and you want to know that you can speak to a course director a module coordinator you want to be able to get in touch and you want answers and not feel that it's going into a dead end you know um so thank you so much natalie um I might ask Andrew next. I'm just going to pick on people. If that's all right. I'm just going to call names. So <laughs> it's like being in class. You can't, you can't get too comfy. <laughs> um, uh, no problem at all, Claire. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. And I know that in a way you have already um, some qualifications already. Andrew um, has a doctor already, and um, he still chose to come to Ulster to study. Uh, the PG Dip um, headship or PG, PG Dip school leadership, and I'm just wondering what led you to the course. What made you think there's a course for me and sign up for it? What was it that brought you to it? Um, I think probably two things. Um, first of all, the lack of you know real training for school leaders in Northern Ireland. You know the um, PQH had had long since disappeared and. Um, just the fact that you know RTU were not training to the level that you know you really would be required to uh, within a school setting, um, and so for me that that was a real need. So I did have a look around. Um, I have to say though I came across Sam quite quickly. Sam's my old headmaster, so you know there was a link there already. So I phoned Sam, and yeah, I would I would agree with Natalie. The initial contact and encouragement that UUJ give to potential students, not just students who have signed up to potential students. Um, you do market very well. And, <laughs> and with that, um, just that care, that, that sort of willingness to get alongside you and to say, you know, where are you in your professional career? And actually, we think you would really benefit from some of the modules. And if you look at the, you know, the, the course titles, of managing people, managing, you know, leadership for learning and, and then whole school leadership, you know, getting into governance of schools. Um, all mm -hmm. of that just, just was exactly what I was looking for. Um, and uh, apart from the fact I don't think I had an option with Sam not to apply, um, <laughs> then uh, you know he did make it extremely easy. And again, I would say, as Natalie said there, the, the admin staff at UJ have, uh, to, as a first point of call, um, made it extremely easy to get fees set up uh, and all of that admin, um, literally a few phone calls, a few clicks even online, and, and you're signed up and ready to go. And all of a sudden, you're a part of this machine, which goes so quickly. I mean, I thought, goodness, two years part-time is going to be uh, it's going to take a lot of uh, effort and time, but you just you you just get onto the wave, and the wave takes you there, and your colleagues take you there. We did. Uh, we were lucky enough to do my first year uh, face to face. Second year was online. Both worked fabulously well, um, and uh, we we learned together. And that's the big thing about this course. I wanted to to link with other professional people. I wanted to to have conversations with like-minded professionals. Um, there was one girl in my school who had just graduated, I think, from the first cohort through um, from this course, and she was really encouraging about about getting others in school to do it as well. So. Um, for all those reasons, um, I would say that, uh, that that's why I find it quite easy to transition onto the course. Great. Thank you so much, Andrew, and good to hear. And I think one thing that's quite striking, and this is something, you know, we saw it very much in the face-to-face, -face, but hopefully online too, that network, that community is really important. And, you know, whenever uh, you're all in your leadership roles in different schools, it'd be lovely to have a critical friend that you can ring up and go, 
I'm in a panic. I don't know what to do. Uh, and I'm hoping that those networks can continue um, even as you go forward uh, in, in your different pathways. Yeah. Um, or even just um, even on the MED, whenever you're wrestling with your ethics or uh, your application, you can call someone and go, I'm stuck. Um, any chance? Uh, you know, and I think that's really important that um, you make a network, a whole study community, really. Um, Kyle, I want to ask you, really, um, how you got on with juggling work, life, school, study, the lot. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just bringing this on you, but I know that that's a real concern. A lot of people think, I haven't time, you know, so um, what would you say about finding time or making it work? Truthfully, I think for, for a number of years before I started, I was I was guilty probably of just putting everything on the long arm because I was always too busy for sort of personal renewal or personal growth. Um, I thought having you know three year old twin girls and a five year old son was the perfect timing to undertake a post grad course. To be honest, and um, I lent heavily on, on my good lady wife who was very understanding, and I'd just taken on. And actually, the timing of this was 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 perfect. I, I work in the Dixon plant. And uh, there was a little bit of uncertainty of, about the Dixon plan, and I thought to myself, well, I want to give myself a, a foot up and a heads up if things do do change. So uh, an email came through, believe it or not, from Stan Millis about a PQL there. I spoke to my headmaster, and he pointed me uh, to speak to a couple of other people, uh, one of whom was, was Robin McLaughlin of Banbridge Academy, who then put me in touch with Sam. And literally within the space of a week, I was sitting in this more... Uh, comprehensive school starting leadership for learning model um, and, and crucially uh, a little bit like Andrew um, yes it was additional work there's, there, there's no question about that but I actually really enjoyed it I found it I found it really enlightening challenging uh, and it just coincided with opportunities then that arose in, in learning college and I was only in the course for a relatively short period of time when I ended up promoting the senior leader in the school and there's no question that the couple of modules that I've studied at that stage helped me with the language, with the thinking, with research, you know, turning research into you know theory into practice. And it sat me in very good stead to get the senior teacher job. And then lo and behold, just as I graduated and just as I finished out of the blue a vice principal role arose in, in Lurgan College and I don't mean fortunate enough to get that. And there's no there's no coincidence that that undertaking the course was was central to me being elevated to that role. So the, the time actually wasn't, you know, I found it okay. You had to work eight hours at night, but the sort of sad individual in me really enjoyed it. You know, I get into the theory, I get into the learning, and I just, you put the additional hours in. And I really did. I, I benefited as much in a leadership capacity, but I also benefited producing in the classroom, truthfully. Because we had mentioned speaking to like-minded individuals. What I really found beneficial was speaking to individuals with different outlooks than me. You know, being much more aware of my own personal blind spot um, and actually getting a more global, you know, feel for school and school leadership and, and awareness that, you know, not everybody thinks and acts like I do. And um, and so I find that really, you know, the work of Stephen Covey, uh, I found really enlightening. I did, and I've, and I've taken it a long way on the journey, so far, which I'm only in the start of, and I might well be coming crying, looking for distance from September or October next year to keep your phones handy for me, please. <laughs> so true. Thank you very much, Kai. And yeah, I mean, I think it, it is interesting. In both cases, the school leadership and the masters, you reflect on your own practice and you engage with others and their practice. And yeah, it really does stop you being so arguably introverted in your own teaching, where it gets so caught up in our own teaching that we barely lift our heads out of our classrooms, down the corridor. And this is something which, you know, in both courses, it makes you think how else could this be done? What might be an alternative approach? Why are we still doing things this way? It makes you ask questions. It makes you look at the leadership in your organization differently. It makes you reflect on your approach to things and hopefully um, can impact on good practice um, across your school and beyond. Thank you so much, Kyle. And yes, um, in some ways I agree, there's not always a good time to study, but you just have to sign up. And I liked Andrew's um, kind of surfing imagery that we we just get on the wave and the wave takes us. And I think sometimes that's true. Um, I started my doctorate um, when my youngest was a week old. So I, I know the <laughs> I know the wave. Um, my wave was a little slow, but nevertheless. <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, Beverly, I want to ask you um, 
about your experience, really. How have you felt um, the masters in terms of uh, support and structure? Uh, and Beverly had just uh, taken a career change as she joined the masters. So I'll let you talk about your thoughts on the, the MED course, really. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, I when I started the MED course, I was a senior leader in a primary school in Northern Ireland here. Um, bit like what has already been said, I was increasingly frustrated with the lack of training opportunities provided by EA, and I felt that a lot of the training opportunities that you could personally source were, as my husband would call, um, serial box uh, accreditation. You know, it was like you've paid for a short course, now what? And, you know, it was more sort of here's some information. There was no real application or challenge associated with it. Um, I had looked into headship and again, um, RTU wasn't running any headship courses and that again sort of left me feeling very what what now? Um, I knew that career-wise, I wanted to eventually step out of the classroom, um, and so to do that, the MED was the right approach for me. So the first year of my MED, um, I've done it over three years. Um, I was in school. At the end of that, I moved into the corporate world into a global educator role. So I now work for a company um, and we create a, don't want to maybe name drop here, Claire, but we create a maths product, which is um, pedagogically aligned. It's used globally. Um, and my role is to look at curriculum and sort of understand that and see how that can be applied to the product. So the MED was actually really fundamental for me to get that job even though it's out of school, it put me ahead of um, the other applicants um, at that time for that role. Um, and it has really helped me to see education in a global sense as well, because I could apply the leadership um, modules that I had undertaken. Even the research element of um, the courses have been really fundamental to where I am in my career at the moment. And in fact, I've just um, I finished my third year I've um, my dissertation was based on how digital technologies can improve learning in the classroom. So it took a really nice blend of where I am presently in my work um, and my experiences as a classroom teacher and leader and looked at how um, technologies can sort of make improvements in education going forward. So it, the course has been fundamental to me and where I am. I do hope to get in a couple of years time perhaps back into education in Northern Ireland here, but for now, I personally wanted to go down the route of um, a global approach um, and to glean from what is happening in education around the world with the impact or the opportunity to bring that back into education here. So it has, I've, I've loved every minute of it. It's um, every course or every module the benefit of them is that you make it your own so the the materials are there you apply it in your situation you apply it in the way that you feel will benefit you or the direction that you want your career to go and then you present that with um the research aspect in the background so i've loved every minute of it and as i said to you claire i can't believe it's over it's now mm -hmm. what now I know it's, it's that end of a, a big musical production. Now, what do we do with our costumes and our spangles? We're, we're just left bereft all of the moment. Well, I would say come and join Barbara. the PhD. Or a cricket or a cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, thank you so much, Beverly. Yes, I'm so glad that you've enjoyed it. And it's been useful and relevant to you. You know, in a way, we always want our courses to be something which is you know, which can be of benefit to you in your classroom, in your day to day practice and not uh, so theoretical and so far removed. We really want it to be relevant. Um, I'm just going to ask. Um, and, oh, sorry, Beverly, go on. I was going to say that's what drew me to Ulster as well, that the courses were current. They were future positioned. Um, you know, they're not just something that has been run for the last three, four, five years, they adapt as per the students on the course. And next year's modules will adapt because of the feedback that we have given. So I love that 
I mean, it's student centered. I love that approach. And yeah, that's what that's what brought me to Ulster as well. Super. Thank you very much, Beverly. Danielle, I'm just going to ask you really, um, we talked before about, um, and we're, we're not going to go into names or anything, but we talked about cereal box courses and, you know, little flippant qualifications that you can get with little accreditation, really. And our course, both our courses really, I would say are more rigorous. How do you feel about the rigor? Would, would you prefer um, something lighter, more accessible? Or how do we feel about the rigour, Danielle? Um, no, I, I wanted the rigour, um, and that's the reason why I contacted Sam to begin with. Do you know why I started off? I was appointed um, as Key Stage 3 leader on the senior management team just before I contacted Sam, and it was kind of panic stations at that point. You know, I was telling myself I wasn't ready for this. You know, I don't know how to manage um, huge teams within, within the school at that level. Um, I had done numerous um, courses beforehand, you know, through the EA, you know, the RTU courses, um, the and the PQH wasn't there anymore. Um, so I know there wasn't going to be anything there that would actually prepare me, you know, for the role. And going through the course, um, you know, through the prospectus, it's like, you know, this this seems interesting. Um, and I have to say, as far as the, the the content and the classes and even the workload, it was very manageable. You know, I think everything was um, kind of worked out. It was one class twice a week, or one class, you know, was it every fortnight we had? Um, and the classes were very beneficial. You know, I think um, Andrew had said there you know about the, the networking and meeting different colleagues from different schools and Kyle had mentioned there about getting different perspectives that helped me immensely because I work in the Irish medium education sector and we we are usually in a wee bubble um, as far as co courses are concerned and getting different views from other um, schools was amazing so I never really felt under pressure as such I'm saying that now <laughs> Um, but at the, at the time, you know, there was a lot of support um, from yourself and Sam, um, and there was group chats going about in, in the class, you know, for support when it came to um, putting in the assignments. And even I found, you know, the university itself, um, as far as the, the library staff, um, I was very concerned even about, um, you know, starting academic writing again, you know, referencing mm -hmm. and thinking back, you know, your degree, you know, I haven't done this for years, and you know, the PGC haven't been back in university, um, and I personally felt quite concerned about that. But as as time went on. You know, I felt very comfortable, and and that I was I was very fortunate to start the course with two other colleagues, and um, myself and, and Podrick, um, who was online there earlier. You know, both feeling that that prepared us then for this year. Um, sorry, skin bell going off here. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> um, so that prepared us for for the the research. Um, module which i found very manageable because you, you it wasn't daunting anymore and those two years because of the rigor and um, prepared you but very very manageable in that respect yeah excellent and that's really good to hear we want it to be something that challenges you that makes you learn that makes you grow and whilst at the same time supporting you in your writing and your academic referencing and so on really that's what we're looking for and i think so much of teaching is about giving. We give to our children and our colleagues, and this is something where you can gain a lot yourself, and then again give it to your colleagues. Well, I think as personally, I, I think it's important that we do have challenges, we do have rigor, and nothing. Sorry, I think I lost my signal there. No, um, I was just you. saying about uh, you know there was. An, all modules were very relevant to my practice especially you know so um within the two years um that i was appointed senior leader you know there was another opportunity um for vice prince for a vice principal role and undoubtedly everything that i learned within the course at that point at the point in time you know um strategic leadership and you know looking at Fulin and covey and everything that we looked at and talked about in class um even the application process i thought was very very well easier at that point um, and it gave me more confidence applying for that job as well you know for that position so yeah all very relevant and I, I enjoyed it immensely I have to say. Super thank you very much Anya and yeah relevance is what we always want we don't want to be an ivory tower we want to be um, something that is very much connected with day-to-day -day practice thank you so much. Uh, Emma Colgan just uh, Association and thank you. You're probably a giant to-do list. Um, I just want to ask you, what have you gained from your study? I mean, what have you found in terms of even 
your own skills or competences? What can you see, you know, if you look back, what, what has changed uh, in your, um, I, I suppose, your toolkit, if, if you like, since joining? Well, I suppose um, going right back to the very beginning, um, I hadn't done any study since graduating in 2002, so I didn't know if I could get back into the reading, the referencing, do you know, the essay writing. Um, but, you know, I really enjoyed getting back into that, so definitely I've gained some skills there. Um, in our studies that we did of team roles, I was able to self-reflect on what kind of team player I am, what kind of leader I am, and then very practical skills as well, such as um, the strategic development planning modules, you know, the budgeting and finance as well. So, you know, a lot of practical skills that you can put to use in school. Um, during my time on the course, then an opportunity did come up in school for a temporary vice principal role. And, you know, during the interview, I really felt that I had the confidence to be talking about all the different things that we have been studying. And I ended up being successful in that post, which is fantastic. So it does open a lot of opportunities up there. Um, I mean, I have gone on then to enroll in the, the master's course. So I, that was one of the things that attracted me to the PGDH because it was small steps that could lead to the master's. Because at the start, I didn't know if I could fit everything in around my school life and home life. So another colleague started the course with me at the time. Um, and he ended up then, he completed one year and was able to bank a certificate in it, the PG cert. I went on then to finish the PGDH and then that leads you into your steps of stairs into your masters. So I've just one more module to complete there. So I've been really pleased with, I've surprised myself with my progress. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And it's one of those things, you know, in, you know, ask you on the wrong week, on the wrong day of the wrong week, you'll say, I can't do it. I don't have the time. But ask you on another day or another evening, you'll you'll see how well it can fit, and and thankfully you can see the the outcome for yourself really. And it's also I think in a lot of cases it brings the self belief and the confidence that you can apply for those roles that you perhaps didn't think were for you. Uh, and I think um, sitting comfortably in a group, um, looking at things like how do we build teams, how do we write a school development plan, it brings that rich confidence really that you can then bring to applications and to everyday situations so thank you so much emma and yes you're one module away you're almost there uh, come january we'll be we'll be celebrating so uh thank you so much um emma, emma craig sorry i know you've been uh, waiting and you've been really busy too um what would you say to somebody who was dithering who was thinking you know will i won't i you know they're looking at the the time commitment, they're looking at the money that could go to a small car or pay for kids at uni or whatever, you know, what what would you say about those people who are in two minds? Um, I would say, first of all, not to be worried about the, you do feel very overwhelmed at the start of it, even the thought of starting. But what I think is whenever you meet everybody else, well, I know it's different when it's online, whenever you meet everybody else, you realise that even those people who are in leadership positions, we're all in the same boat. We're all going, oh, can I do this? Can I not do this? And the support then even from your tutor or something is, is constant. It's not a, it doesn't happen on the night of the session. It's constant. So it's an email, do you know, can you reference me to what was the piece of research you said on this? And it's that kind of support I think is very, I have found it just instrumental. And I think it's the fact that you you gain so much in learning. Sam, all his comments are always learning gains, learning gains in my essays. And I think it's the fact that you, I became a pupil again and it really has changed how I see education because I have become that pupil going, I can do this. And I nearly, I'm at that stage where I'm going, did you see, do you see my mark? Do you see how well, you know, just not from a boasting, just from a, I learned how to do this. I have, I was here when I started and now I'm up. I'm really, really pleased with my progress. And I think just, you know, in my teaching and it just changed that dramatically, but even as a person, just that um, success has changed even my confidence in, I, I started off doing the course just to get the piece of paper, to be really honest, just in order to apply. But personally, I feel I've developed as a person as well as an educator. And even just the fact when I go into the classroom now, I don't just do the same thing I've been doing for eight years. I go, does that work? 
And I go back and I think, now, I remember reading Michael Sullivan saying this about nuanced leadership. Now, I wonder, and it's just those wee things that I have the confidence to think, let's try it. Do you know what? If it doesn't work, that's, you know, it does not end the world. And I think the thing I think the best is about the course is the fact that the tutors are seasoned professionals. Do you know, it's the stories about when I taught this class, this is what I did. I, you know, Sam would say, I tried this and it didn't work. And I love those stories because you're going, oh, oh, he's done this. He's been here. And that's what I think the best thing is learning from those people who have been there before you, but also the people alongside you who are going, oh, I'm trying this out and this isn't working. You know, this is and often when we would do online sessions and we go into teams, Sam would, we'd breakout groups and he'd say, right, now discuss this, this and this. And then we'd all go on and go, here, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing with this to do with COVID? What are you doing in your school? And it's all that. The professional dialogue has been beyond helpful. And honestly, like the, the actual qualification is kind of like an added extra because it's the dialogue and it's the learning as well. And I do, I miss the face-to-face. -face. I really, not just the sandwiches and the shortbread, I miss the face-to-face. <laughs> Could you help me with that, please? Uh, if you don't mind, even the rest of the group, that's our big worry. That you know, I talk about the blessings of COVID. I don't have to drive to Lurgan or uh, Jordanstown or McGee anymore. But I'm very, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm quite guilty that we're not giving quite the same. Was there a big difference oh. online versus uh, face to face? I mean, we worked too hard at making it meaningful. Well, could could mm -hmm. any of you come back on that? I mean, should we have some sort of a blended approach? Should I be carrying sandwiches occasionally to Jordan's Tower? <laughs> <Help me, everyone. laughs> I think Beverly has a has a thought on that. Beverly. Yeah. I can't hear. No, can you hear me not yet? Um, I did the course one hundred percent online. Um, and that is the ability to do that is what drew me to the course. I had toyed with a master's for a number of years um, and then decided to have kids and then other bits of life got in the way. Um, I'm based up in the Northwest and the thought of a drive to a university in Belfast one or two nights a week was something that was not possible for me to do um, after a really busy day in school. So being able to do the course online um, completely online is the only way that I have managed to get my master's. Um, do I miss the aspect of being face to face with my colleagues on the course? Yes, I do feel that I have missed some connection there. But still, now that the course is finished, there are a number of colleagues that um, I am still emailing, that I'm still in contact with, that you know, we hope to have our celebratory coffee this summer at some point. Um, and I think if in this sort of world that we're in now, that idea of blended learning is fundamental to education. It's been happening in other countries for many, many years. Um, and I think it's Northern Ireland has sort of needed to get up to speed with um, using technology to support learning um, and assessing the ways in which technology is used so that it's meaningful, that it's purposeful, and that we can validate the learning that's taken place. Um, do I think that my master's is any less better than someone who went face to face to university? Absolutely not. In fact, I think I've worked harder because I have had to self manage, self direct a lot of my learning. My tutors were there to support me. Any questions I had, they answered. But I had to manage that. I didn't have someone every week saying, no, tomorrow your assessment, you're, you know, you're due to have this in. I had to do that. Um, and when you're a parent and you're working full time, you're able to work it around your, your schedule so much better than having to be at a certain place at a certain time. So pros and cons. Yes, it would be lovely to have sat in a lecture theater and um, listened to you know someone face to face but can it be done to the same level online absolutely but if someone wants to bring me thing, I'd, I'd, coffee. I'd, I'd have to say <laughs> it, it was never a lecture they could uh, danielle emma and kyle and andrew 
And um, and um, Ken Hawkins <laughs> proved it was never a lecture. No, no he never no, speaks in the room, and it's great. And, and a fight over the buns and so on. Which, uh, uh, I yeah. always lost. I got the last sandwich in the in the. But I mean, what about what about any people I just mentioned? Did, I mean, did you was it a big change? Was it a big down a step down? Is Emma gone? Is Emma? Yeah. No. Uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, no, I think it wasn't, it was definitely different. Now, I do think I had great ideas that I would have lots more time because I wasn't driving to Jordanstown and driving home and I thought it would be easier. But I think the fact that the, the online sessions, the breakout groups were really helpful. I found them so helpful just for connecting with people. And then you go, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, there's Andrew, I haven't seen you. What's a crack house? Do you know, that was really helpful. But I do think there's something about the over tea and coffee and a sandwich, talking about things to do with school. And it's that professional dialogue that you learn so much that I find I learned so much. But again, with COVID and everything else, you still, there was still that dialogue just over a screen mm -hmm. was different. But I, yeah, I do yeah. think in ter terms of, um, I was worried it would be an awful lot of time in terms of those sessions, but it's actually not a lot of time. It's only once a fortnight and it's, you know, your module is um, split up and it's not as much as what, you think so i think some people imagine they're gonna be there every night of the week or is an awful lot but it's actually very it's very cleverly all set out and structured i think thank you emma um and natalie natalie never got to do face to face with us uh at all it was always online um, mm -hmm. natalie how was it being far flung uh you don't get the joys of northern irish weather and green fields and so on um <laughs> How was it? Where are you? Um, I sat at the module. Where, where are you? Yeah, so uh, I sat at the module in the UAE. So I've been back and forward. I'm now back in the UAE for a few days before I come back again. Um, so yeah, my, my son, <laughs> I've been all over the place, in, really. My, my son taught in Dubai for years, so I know exactly. What, I know what it's like there. We go there regularly. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So you yeah, it I mean, it's too sunny almost. It's 41 degrees today, so. Um, not enjoyable. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I was really worried. I was really worried about how it would apply and and how I'd be able to apply to my circumstance. But um, as as I think Danielle said and a couple of others, it's it's about taking what you're learning and adapting it to your situation. And every single module was about you taking that information and that knowledge and adapting to your situation and I really I can't express enough how much I enjoyed writing the essays and I've never said that before in my life I have a math teacher I have a maths degree <laughs> I'm not I don't write essays I haven't written an essay for about eight years and here I was saying oh, I'm gonna join this master's course and and write an essay now and I had no confidence when I started I really I didn't even know how to structure an essay how to write in third person I, and you know, um, I was really lucky because, well, Claire was the first person that did my module and I'm sure that she had lots of emails from me asking about advice and guidance. But the level of feedback you get from every module has really built my confidence and I'm so proud of myself. Like I can't believe how well I've done. And I honestly can't believe that I would ever have gotten here from two years ago. And, and like you've all said, the two years has gone so quickly, it's unbelievable. And I've written so many essays and I've conducted research and I've helped improve my school and I've just been overwhelmed with the amount of support I've received from everyone as well. And um, I, I just think anyone who's even not sure about it, I wasn't sure, I didn't think I could do it. I had no literacy skills, no English skills whatsoever. And I've managed to do it with really good results as well. Um, so I've really enjoyed it and I've been able to apply it to all of my circumstances over the past two years. So it's been absolutely amazing. I do have to go now, but I really just want to thank you all so much because it's been fantastic. It really has. Thank you so much, Natalie, and congratulations and well done. And um, I appreciate you coming Ky along Ky today. Kyle and Andrew, bun buns or no buns? Sandwiches <laughs> or no sandwiches? Yeah, I, I missed the fruit, fruit Sam. I enjoyed nibbling the fruit. It got me. Um, no, truthfully, like, I'm one of those educational thieves. I, I learn so much from other people and I steal so much from and garner so much from others. I did miss that a little bit when the face to face went. You know, I enjoyed, you know, we were a little more initially and then Jordanstown afterwards. And I really did. Well, I had to drive from Portadown to Jordanstown and so on. Um, I enjoyed that, 
not really not, not, not to say that it didn't enjoy the, the online stuff, uh, the breakout room yeah. and so on work, but it did that networking and, and the ability to, to meet a new people. And sure, I'm looking forward now on the 7th of June to take some money off you and um, take Gareth Fisher and a few at Royal Port Rush and the golf course. That's the first opportunity to network really face to face. Since and I'm very much looking forward to that. But they enjoy the networking and, and getting to meet other professionals. That you know, as cycling schools, we all start to work in our own silos, don't we? If we're allowed, uh, it's quite a bit. Nice. So uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Absolutely. I'm just going to open the floor. Any thoughts? Anything you'd like to share to people who are considering the course, or uh, anything you would say in terms of things that you've learned or gained, or would recommend? Uh, floor is open as as you wish. Uh, Andrew, please. Andy. Yeah. On the first night that I walked into the University of Ulster, I saw Sam for the first time in many a year, and my blood ran, ran cold. But after it warmed up again, um, <laughs> I, I asked Sam. I don't know if you remember this. I asked you if leadership is is something that we're born with, or is it something that you can learn? Because when I walked in, I thought leaders are somebody who, you know, you, you just know a good leader. They're there. You, you know, we've been under charismatic leaders in our schools and we know and, and try to emulate them. But I can, without a shadow of it, I'd say that it, it can be learned. Yes, you come to it with a certain amount of ability, a natural innate ability. But with the process that you go through in this course for two years, you break down leadership as to what it is. You look at the hallmarks of it. You look at what it is to be a good leader. And at the heart of it is people. Um, and I guess with the online thing, you know, you miss a little bit of that in the learning. We are human. We are relational. And um, But I have to say, you can do that online. You can do that through the breakout groups. But, um, but it takes you back to what you are like as a person. And it puts people back and pupils back in the center of your thinking. Um, and that is an absolutely brilliant thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patrick. Can I go back? Can I go back? Can I come back and say, I haven't put this to you at all, but uh, uh, the, the uh, comments about the breakout groups have been in my mind too. I'm very aware of the power of the breakout groups. Uh, I know a couple of you didn't experience it quite so much here, but I was aware as I jumped from group to group to group, uh, somebody, uh, somebody admitted you weren't always talking about, you weren't always <laughs> on task. <laughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> still great. I got that feeling. What What about this? Is I haven't put this to you at all, Claire. That we do it like the, we the sessions always start at five p.m. And forgive me, I'm talking about the BGDSL uh, more than the MA. They, they have a different setup. But sessions start at five o'clock. Why don't I open it like this at four thirty? So there's a running online group for professional dialogue. Uh, a sort of a warm session that people can go in, go out of, and then we all, as always, as everybody here knows, we start sharp at five, and we take the proper breaks, and then even at the end, I wouldn't expect so many at the end because people were tempted to fall over at the <laughs> at the quarter to eight at the quarter to eight bell. But what what a, what about that? Anybody? What that? What do you think of that, Claire? Yeah, I think it can work. In some cases, people are a scramble to be there for five, but I think yeah. if it's open early and even open late, if people do want to have a quick chat, I think that's that's lovely and again helps build networks. And it's again a compromise in this you know in this restricted arrangement. I think it's uh, and I think it will promote more natural uh, exchanges yeah. too. You know, so I think yes, leave open and. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's already You're nice discussion. Yep. You're, You're okay. Up, so um, I was just going to see if anybody wants to add anything else about their experiences or, um, you know, if someone's hesitating, final thoughts, really. Uh, Emma. Please. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think just the financial side was a big worry for me for not understanding how that works because saw a question in the chat there. 
And I think it, the whole financial side actually works like a dream. I didn't realize how easy it would be to do the, well, I went the student loan route just because it's so much easier than, you know, thinking about using savings and things. But actually the, the university, wherever the staff are, it's all literally a matter of clicks online and it's done for you. And it's a very, mm -hmm. for us at the time, it was just a more affordable route to go. And I think it's it makes it so much easier because I know a lot of people talk and say, oh, I don't have a few thousand pounds to pay for that. And I said, but it's all, it's, you know, it's all set up for you. You go online, you log in, you set it all, and the staff are brilliant. Because uh, I had, I wasn't sure about going on to the second year, how I do with it. And one phone call, somebody somewhere in Jordan's town threw it all out for me. So it's really, really straightforward because that can be a real stumbling block for people. But it's definitely, yeah. you know, easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super. Uh, Beverly? I would just second what Emma says there. Um, the financial side of things was something that I worried about and probably was something that put me off in the past um, because you just assume you're working, you're just going to have to pay for this up front. Um, but being able to, I mean, I went down the student loan route, um, I think even in terms of repaying it will be manageable. Uh, it took me quite a few years to pay off my first loan. But do you know what? It's only a few pounds every month, really, when you when you look at it that way. Um, and the staff in the office are so helpful. I constantly bombarded them with emails. It was never too much bother for them to help or to give me step by step instructions of how to access whatever platform it was I needed to get into. Um, and as I've said already, I wish I had done this five. 10 years ago. Um, life will always get in the way. There will always be a bill to pay. There will always be a kid or a family member who you think needs your attention. And sometimes you have to be selfish and, you know, follow your own dreams as well. I believe that doing this, my kids have seen uh, a quality to me in terms of how I can manage work, how I can manage and take pride in my own study time for them and to do fun things with them because it is such a well set up course it is so manageable there's busy times as people have said but there's times when you can just you know keep ticking things over and do your reading in the background it can be done and so any hesitancy I would say go for it now because you'll wish like me in 10 years time that you had done it 10 years ago mm -hmm. thank you Thank you so much, Beverly. Any final thoughts? I'm just going to um, share a few points about um, fees and so on and applications. Anything someone is burning to say something just before we finish? It's great to see you all smiling and you know in good form at the end of the academic year. It's fantastic. Uh, and even Sam, <laughs> smiling as ever. <laughs> So, um, first, uh, just um, I'll flick through the last few slides, and if you have any last thoughts as we come to that, um, the the last few slides are just really the, I suppose really the logistics. Really, uh, let me see if I can share this for me. Uh, let me see. Am I going to tile view? Sorry, folks, I'm having bother sharing my last few slides. Sam, are you able to hop on and see if you can oh, share yeah. them? Yeah. Got yeah, there should just be a few um, about applications. Um, I'll just talk as we're loading them up. Applications uh, we accept almost all year round. Entry points are really September and January. Um, fees we've talked about briefly. Um, yes, uh, that's us. Yes, um, it looks bad when you see that written up large as six thousand. 200 and so on. That would be for the full masters. The MED would be a little less. It works out roughly 1,030 per module, um, but you can pay in interest free installments. Uh, there are postgraduate student loans available, uh, and we have discounts for full upfront payment or for uh, alumni. So um, there are lots of different ways of getting through it. And sadly, it's a bit like any direct debit. It just comes out, you know. Um, and although we might flinch at the first payment going out after a while, you don't notice quite so often. Um, so that's uh, the fees. And as I say, just get in touch if you have any queries. Um, going on to the next bit is really about applications. 
Um, just send me a query or Sam a query even if you have uh, any questions really uh, and I can send you details and you can have a look and find out more uh, applications as I say for September and January entry. We're quite busy, numbers are looking good so I would recommend applying sooner rather than later just so that you're able to get registered and on the course promptly. Um, Belfast campus, uh, although we won't be face to face, you will have perhaps the use of Belfast campus in due course for study and resources and so on, although much will be online. So we're quite excited about the, uh, the opening of the uh, new campus. Uh, other than that, just to kind of keep, um, keep this in mind, uh, we're also mindful of how uh, we uh, work in terms of communal spaces and the library and so on and we'll uh, keep updating our provision as best as we can really. Uh, but online courses will definitely be running and we'll keep an eye on um, physical environment. Um, any queries, uh, please do get in touch. I know whenever I was at uni, I would never have dreamt of contacting a course director for anything, um, but actually it's completely fine. So uh, my email's there, my phone number's there. If you have any queries about either course, please do get in touch. Uh, I'd be happy to help you. Uh, and any question, big or small, and if I can't answer it, I will find someone who can help me. Um, so thank you. And as I said, we will have a few more uh, postgraduate events during the year. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to join us at one of those, if not, um, if not now. Um, so uh, I just want to say thank you very much to my panel. Um, it, I've been very pleased to have you with me. Uh, and actually, whilst I can explain some things, I couldn't explain it uh, half as well as you can and um, thank you so much to courses uh, lots of experiences lots of people coming in from different backgrounds and hopefully you can see a range of experiences but hopefully the common is that they find it useful and they're still smiling almost the end of the course which I think is positive uh, and hopefully we'll um, look back on their time at Ulster with fond memories too. Um, so thank you very much everyone. Um, uh, I've really appreciated your help today and uh, have a good summer and keep in touch if you need anything.